All right, I think uh, folks have had a chance to get in so we can go ahead and get started. Thank you families for joining us today. Uh, my name is Whitney White. I'm from Parent and Family Programs. Um, we are thrilled to be able to offer you our next coffee chat in our series today centered around career education. We know that's a top uh, question and thing that you're thinking about all the time for your students as it kind of all boils down to why they're here at UC, you know, where are they headed after they finish with us. Uh, before we get started and I turn it over to our wonderful panelists, I just want to uh, make sure that you're all aware of our office, Parent and Family Programs. As a reminder, we are your resource uh, for anything that you need at UC. You can give us a call or email us anytime. Our email is families at uc.edu. That's probably the easiest thing to remember. Uh, during this call and you can reach out to us anytime. Um, today, I'm really excited that we have Ellie Bridges and Taylor Etchen from our experience-based learning um, division and specifically they work in career education. They're gonna tell you um, a little bit about what they do and the kinds of questions that they get from parents and families and how you can best support your student. And then we'll open the um, group up for questions Feel free to type your question right in the chat if you think of it as we're going along. We will save them until the end of the presentation, um, but that way you don't have to remember it and I'll make sure that we get that asked as we get towards the end. All right, thanks so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ellie and Taylor. Good morning. Well, thank you, Whitney. Thanks so much for having us this morning. We'll go ahead and start with some introductions um, to tell you a little bit more about us. As Whitney mentioned, my name is Ellie Bridges. I am the director of our Bearcat Promise Career Studio here at UC. Um, I have been at UC since 2015, and I started off working as a career coach um, and now work with a wonderful team of career coaches that support students across the university. Um, I myself am a first generation college student, so um, I understand some of the struggles that students are potentially going through um, as they navigate college. Um, so. Just wanted to um, introduce you. Um, and Taylor, would you mind sharing some information about yourself? Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. My name is Taylor Etchen, and I serve as a career coach. Uh, I have been with UC since 2019, and prior to that, worked as a recruiter. Um, so really excited to work with your students um, on anything and everything career-related, and happy to be here this morning. Thank you, Taylor. We also just wanted to welcome you. We're so um, appreciative and thankful that you're here. Um, parents and families really play a pretty critical role in students' career decision-making, so um, we're excited that you're here. Um, we intend to share with you a little bit more about what the university is already doing to um, prepare your student and what we offer. Um, and we're also going to provide some tips and advice about ways that you might be able to support your student um, in terms of career-related conversations. Quickly, I wanted to share with you about the division. Um, so the division as a whole is known um, as the Division of Experience-Based Learning and Career Education, LC for short. Um, we are a pretty large unit on campus and a pretty large career services for an institution of our size. Uh, we have 65 faculty and staff, and then we also have student staff that work with us. Um, our office in particular supports students who are at the undergraduate level, the graduate level, as well as alumni. Um, and we support students from eight of the colleges, with the exception of Linder College of Business, which has their own career services. Um, they offer many of the same services that we'll talk about today. But we did wanna make sure that you're aware that if your student happens to be a Linder student, that they also have um, a separate center available to them at their disposal. And then finally, I just wanted to share um, that UC has been ranked pretty highly for our co-ops and our internship program, um, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about that today. So a little bit about what we do. Really, we support students throughout the entire career development process, which is shown here on the right, from getting to know a little bit more about themselves, to understanding what options exist for their major, to making a game plan about how they're going to pursue those opportunities, 
and then gaining experience and pursuing either graduate school or the world of work. So we do this by meeting students wherever they're at. So it doesn't matter if a student is at the very beginning of the process and needs to you know, think about who they are um, or if they've already decided on a major, understand you know, what occupations exist with that, within that field. Um, we're really here to help a student wherever they're at to create a plan um, to help them gain experience and prepare for the future. So the way that we do that is we um, are you know, strong advocates of experience-based learning or experiential learning, of getting hands-on experience to try out different careers and occupations to see if it's a good fit. So we connect students um, with our colleagues in our office um, for those experiential learning programs. We also um, teach professional development courses. So that offers um, more structured opportunities for students to engage. And we also connect students with employers. So we host career fairs, employer information sessions, um, and provide advice and suggestions of how to pursue graduate school. So we'll go into more detail um, and share um, much more about each of these, but just wanted to give you a quick overview of what our office does. Yeah, and to get us started going into a little bit more detail about the way in which we work with students, um, our office offers peer career coaching. We have a fantastic group right now of six current students who are highly trained um, in the work that we do, and they offer walk-in hours right now, both virtually and in person. And our peer career coaches can help your students with things like resume, cover letter, CV, they even do some mock interview practice. Uh, so really, I think the tip here is to encourage your students to come on in early. It's never too early to see us establish that relationship, get a connection, uh, potentially schedule an appointment with their career coach as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but we're really excited to kind of offer that on-demand coaching service to your students. We, in addition to offering those walk-in hours with our peer career coaches, we also have a staff in our office of four professional career coaches. And our staff meets one-on-one -on -one with your students. Um, and each of our coaches is specifically assigned to different majors and programs within the university. So hopefully we're able to establish and develop a relationship with your student. And each time they have an appointment, they come back and see the same person and build upon the momentum that we've already created. Uh, but we cover any number of topics that are career related in these appointments, really from the beginning. I know Ellie discussed that career development wheel kind of uh, identifying skills and interests all the way through the actual um, job search process or graduate school process um, and taking those next steps and everything in between. Students can register for appointments with us through a system called Handshake. And Handshake is UC's career platform. The URL is listed on our slide here. We will talk a little bit more in detail about Handshake and all its capabilities later on, but that's how they get to us. One of the things that we often do in these appointments is discuss personality and career assessments. So these are things that our staff has been trained in and certified to provide to your student. Um, right now we offer both the Myers-Briggs as well as the strong interest inventory. And these really help students to understand their values, their skills and interests, even going into things like how they receive information and where they garner energy in their life, and then how to connect that to career. Uh, so both of these assessments are really founded in a lot of data, years and years of data and research. Um, and it's a great tool for a lot of students who are potentially considering changing majors or even are within a major that they're comfortable with, but wanting to know more about how their personality can be a great asset to them in their career search. Um, so definitely show support for your students to do some of these exploratory assessments um, and encourage them to pursue careers that are in line with their, their values and interests. 
We also offer an extensive amount of tools when it comes to occupational research. So let's say your student is someone who has identified an area or a field of interest or multiple areas or fields of interest to them when it comes to work. And they really want to know the realities of these jobs, what it would look like for them eventually. Uh, we can discuss things like job outlook, pay, skills, looking at similar occupations by utilizing a number of resources. Um, we have a fantastic tool called What Can I Do With This Major? And I know that that title is very self-explanatory, but truly um, this tool allows our students to see the full depth and breadth of anything that they could potentially utilize their background, their academic background to go into. Um, and then from there, really getting into some more detail with the Occupational Outlook Handbook or even another tool called ONET. These allow us to look at census data and median income, for instance, uh, really detailed information about what that occupation, um, the tasks are involved on a day-to-day -day basis, um, lots and lots of different granular things that can help them start to make some tangible decisions. We even encourage one step further doing informational interviewing with um, people in the field currently that they're interested in. So we can help coach them on how to ask for those informational interviews, what they might look like, et cetera. Um, it's really an exciting time. All right, so perhaps they've done a lot of that work, they've identified kind of what their goal outcome might be or multiple outcomes might be. And now it's time to think about a plan um, and gain experience to help them get there. So our division offers a lot of different opportunities here. And I know that Ellie will talk about them more in depth later on in this presentation, but um, Things like part-time jobs to gain relevant transferable skills, we can help connect them with. Um, and potentially exploring on-campus clubs and organizations, volunteer opportunities. We have a couple of online platforms that help connect students with these events and um, opportunities, one being Handshake, which we've already talked about a little bit. And then Campus Link is a way that students can research all the different clubs and organizations at their disposal on campus. And it's important um, for you all as families and parents to encourage kind of this balance of academic as well as activities outside of the classroom and, and gaining that experience. Um, they all provide different benefits when it comes to their work life later on, which I think is pretty self-evident to, to most of you. But um, yeah, the, oftentimes students just need a little bit of reassurance and, and confidence boost to get out there and get connected with some of these things outside the classroom. I'm going to chat a little bit about the experiential learning opportunities that exist at UC. Um, there are many um, outside of even the ones that are mentioned here, but I'm going to discuss the ones that are housed specifically within our division. Um, so these include co-op, international experiential learning, service learning, a program called UC Forward, undergraduate research, as well as the pre-health internship program. Um, so you might be aware of the importance of participating in experiential learning. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, as you're having conversations with your student, um, that you encourage them to consider these opportunities um, and engage in them. It's a great for, way for students to try out different things that they're considering. Um, sometimes they find that, you know, maybe they're not in the right major or they don't like a particular um, industry that they thought they would like. And it's um, better to learn that in early and you know, be able to pivot um, than to set your entire career path on something. So um, you know, not only does it help students kind of learn a little bit more about themselves, but it also helps them be competitive when they graduate um, and then they pursue the world of work or going into graduate school. So um, this is really a great way to try out things, but also again, to gain those skills to make sure you're competitive for um, whatever comes next after graduation. So for 
First, I want to talk about our co-op program or cooperative education. Um, co-op was actually started at the University of Cincinnati back in 1906 by Herman Schneider. Um, and what this program does is it allows our students um, in programs in engineering, DAP, and IT, uh, they're actually in a mandatory co-op program. So they will do um, full-time co-op rotations. These are typically 15 to 18 weeks long, so they take up an entire semester. And they alternate back and forth between um, experience in the classroom and then an experience out um, working or doing research um, or, you know, working abroad. So um, again, we have a mandatory program for these students. We do have some optional programs and we're working to expand these. Um, so students who are studying communication can participate in the optional program. Um, and we're also working on relationships with psychology and political science to offer optional co-op to those students as well. The work that a student does, um, it is important that it is related to their major. So we have co-op faculty advisors who work with us that assess the opportunities students are interested in pursuing um, to make sure that it's appropriate um, in terms of relation to their, their field, um, but also that it's going to include supervision and that there will be someone there to evaluate students' performance and provide feedback. So an important part of our co-op process is actually the reflection component. So um, in order for that to happen, it's necessary for a student to be evaluated to then be able to reflect on their experience, um, taking in feedback from a supervisor um, to be able to you know, understand what they learned from that experience and how that's going to impact them for their next experience. So students in the mandatory co-op program, they do three to five years, um, or sorry, three to five co-ops, and this often does result in a one-year extension in program length. So those students are typically in five-year programs instead of four-year programs. Um, because we knew that this opportunity right now is not currently available to all students, we wanted to make sure that COP is available and accessible to all students. So we um, created programs over the last year or two um, in our Co-op 2.0 program. The only difference here is that these opportunities are part-time opportunities and they're completely optional for a student to opt in. So three of the Co-op 2.0 opportunities are the micro Co-op, co-op and the service learning co-op. So the micro co-op is um, a, can be short term. It can be, you know, a two week project based assignment um, or a two month project based assignment. So um, the, the, you know, the types of opportunities are much more expansive. A student can kind of pick and choose um, between the opportunities that are listed out in our database through Parker Dewey. Um, to participate in these opportunities and to maybe hone their skills um, in technical areas or to you know, apply their communication skills to doing some marketing. So this is one opportunity that exists for students. Another opportunity is our on-campus co-op program. So this is fantastic for students that um, you know, want to work on campus, but also make sure that the positions that they're pursuing, pursuing are the students in these roles work part-time. Um, they're typically five to 20 hours long, um, and the student can earn up to $14 an hour. Similar to our mandatory cut program, they are also supervised um, as well as evaluated, so they receive feedback. And these students take a complimentary professional development course as well to make sure that they're gaining the skills necessary to be successful on the job in terms of professionalism, but also to reflect on their experiences and think about how that experience is going to help them at their next position. So actually the students in our office, our peer career coaches, are on-campus co-op students. Um, some other on-campus co-op positions would include um, our RAs, our resident assistants, uh, peer educators, who uh, work and assist other students. And uh, we do have um, COP 2.0 students who are also working in our library and our student run free clinic. So we've included some links here. We'll make sure to send this out in the presentation so we'll be able to click through on this. Um, but we have links that take you directly, in this case, out to Handshake, which is where all of our on campus co op positions are hosted. And then also just out to our website to learn a little bit more. 
And then finally, we've included contact information for the individual within our office. Um, remember I said that there were about 70 people in our office. So we wanna make sure that if you do have questions that you can get connected to the right individual. Our last co-op 2.0 opportunity is our service learning co-op. This is um, an opportunity that's available from a $12 million grant that we actually received. Um, and so this is one of the components of that grant. And it allows students um, to work in a nonprofit organization and to be able to receive funding. So um, a student would participate in an internship or co-op in a nonprofit, um, internships in particular, and they're often unpaid. And um, we really wanna see students have paid experiences as much as possible um, to help them you know, pay for school um, and also just to validate that work is important as well as compensation. So in this opportunity, um, students can earn up to $12.50 an hour. Um, and it does tend to be a little bit shorter term because the funding covers 80 hours. But it's still a great way for a student to um, try out different um, nonprofit organizations to be able to apply the skills that they're learning in the classroom to the world of work. Um, and also, um, you know, be supervised and, and receive some feedback. So again, these opportunities are posted out on Handshake um, and our colleague Paula Harper would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Moving into our other formal programs, we also have a service learning program. Um, UC's service learning program is actually the second largest experiential learning program on campus and it is the largest service learning program across the US. So um, UC takes um, service learning very seriously. What service learning is, is it is offered in conjunction with an academic course and it allows a student to be able to partner with a nonprofit um, and to be able to, again, apply what they're learning in the classroom to help a nonprofit with the current problem that they're solving. So not only does this increase students' awareness of local nonprofits in, in the Cincinnati community, but it also allows them to apply what they're learning in the classroom to solving these problems. So here's one example of a recent project that our students completed. Um, this is students who are in our um, public, re public relations um, and marketing classes, and they worked with a local nonprofit called Saturday Hoops. Um, Saturday Hoops is a program for low-income students um, to do play basketball and to have mentors and they were really struggling to be able to get people to participate in this. So UC students helped build um, campaigns to be able to bring in um, more students and volunteers to participate in this program. So um, we have many programs as I mentioned um, and a student if you know if a student is interested in this the best way to be able to find these opportunities is actually to speak with um, Michael Sharp, who's our program manager for that, or to connect with their academic advisor who can help them search the course catalog and find those opportunities. UC also has a program called UC Forward. Um, this is a unique program that um, many other institutions are not offering. Um, and what it does is it allows students to collaborate with faculty, and local employers um, to work on solving problems for an employer. So again, it's offered as one of our professional development courses. So it's kind of a structured 15 week opportunity for students. And um, there's two examples that come to mind that students have recently participated in. So one would be the Zero Hunger, Zero Waste campaign. Uh, this is a partnership with uh, the local Kroger company. And it's really taking a look at how food is wasted across campus and what are some practices that can be put in place um, to reduce food waste, but also um, you know, how are students experiencing barriers to food access and how can we make sure that students have the resources that they need um, to have access to food to be successful. The picture here on the right is actually from a student's experience with a local organization called Standard Textile. Um, and Standard Textile makes uh, window furnishings in this particular example uh, to be used in the hotel industry. And so UC students um, were able to come together in groups and 
think of different ideas of ways that they could um, create window furnishings in hotels that would reduce energy costs. Um, and so this is actually an example of a student who is presenting his idea and um, Sierra Textile was actually able to use one of those ideas to implement into their business practices. So again, just a great way for students from a variety of different backgrounds to come together to understand, you know, how to solve problems in a business environment um, and to put those into action. So again, because this is an academic course, students can find it either by connecting with Frank Russell um, or reaching out to their academic advisor to find those uh, UC Forward classes in, in the registrar's offerings. We also have undergraduate research. Um, so UC is a research one act, act, um, institution. This means that we are a research active institution. Um, we are one of 115 universities across the U.S. Um, that has this, this standing. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities for students to be engaged in research. And research doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be, you know, a biology major or even an engineering major. Um, students at UC who do undergraduate research come from a wide variety of majors, from education majors um, to English majors. So. We really take a, a broad standing on what um, research looks like and how students are applying it. And the way that these experiences typically work is that a student will either um, work with a faculty member who is working on research and they will work alongside them um, or students are able to engage in courses that have um, research components which qualify under this program. And then finally, to celebrate research, what we do every year is we have um, what's called the um, Undergraduate Scholarly Showcase. And this is where students um, from across the university come together and they present their research to, you know, their peers and to professional staff and faculty that work across campus. And we also bring in employers as well. So they get to share what they've been studying, um, as well as potentially connect with some employers who are there seeking students um, for their organization as well. And finally, our last opportunity for experiential learning is actually one that can take students abroad. So this is an opportunity for students to do um, many of the things that we've already talked about, right? So internships, co-ops, research and service learning, and do that in um, a setting abroad. So these experiences can be, um, you know, a semester long, so 15 weeks or shorter term faculty led experiences, which are typically two weeks um, and will take place either around spring break time or the very beginning of the summer semester. So there are structured programs. Um, which will take students across the globe. You can see some of the locations mentioned here of London, Berlin, um, Cape Town, but also a student is able to um, connect with our program manager for this and you know, share if they'd like to have um, a different experience or if they have a particular location in mind um, and try to set up an opportunity as well. So all students from all majors are, all, are welcome to participate in this. Um, unfortunately, right now, due to COVID-19, um, most of these opportunities are put on pause just due to travel restrictions. Um, the only opportunity right now that is accepting applications for fall 21 is actually the Shanghai experience. Um, but again, as soon as COVID-19 um, hopefully passes, um, we expect to open these opportunities back up to students as well. All right, uh, so I have the privilege of speaking with you all about some different events and ways to connect with employers on campus that are offered through our division. So each spring and fall, we offer a very large career fair. Um, there's also part-time job fairs that are held throughout the year an E2C symposium for creative professionals. Then there are some more major specific career fairs as well for your students to look out for. So education, criminal justice, I know communication has one. There's a nursing fair as well. 
all of these opportunities are ways that employers can connect directly with your students. Employers are coming to us seeking to employ them, right? Um, and wanting to have conversations with them. So stay tuned to Handshake. That's where we publish all of these events for your students to register for. Right now, a lot of these career fair type events are being held virtually. So it's really neat. Handshake has the capability and the capacity to structure these totally online and still allow those really meaningful connections and information sharing to happen. Also thinking about preparing for life after college, our office offers a couple of events to help with this. Uh, we do offer some headshot or professional photograph opportunities in our office. In the past, we've done those a couple of times per semester, uh, but we have a really, really exciting opportunity that has just arrived to the Career Studio this semester, and it's called the Iris Headshot Photo Booth. And you can actually see a photo of the Iris Photo Booth in the top right-hand corner. Uh, this is a free way for students to come to get professional level headshots done for their professional profiles like LinkedIn or Handshake uh, or really any other use. It's very neat because you go in the booth and you can live time see what your image is going to look like. Um, that often provides students a little bit more comfort, right? Um, and it allows them to get the image that is exactly what they want. You can even do some editing in there and it sends you all of your images electronically. So that is through our career studio. Right now we are um, encouraging students to register for an appointment to utilize IRIS just because of COVID-19. We want to make sure that uh, the environment in the studio is safe for all students. Um, we also offer JCPenney suit up events. And these are really neat because we partner directly with JCPenney to offer your students and actually you yourself uh, professional attire at some awesome discounts. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner an image of students taking advantage of that. They might utilize these clothes for um, interview opportunities as well as their roles eventually. I know that that might look a little bit different right now as well in terms of COVID-19 and wanting to make sure everything is safe. So if that's of interest to you and your students, stay tuned. Again, that opportunity will be published through Handshake and we'll release details as they come. There are also employers who contact us who want to come to campus to deliver information sessions. Um, so we would provide space on campus and make sure that those opportunities are communicated to students and bring folks together to learn about companies, organizations, and the opportunities that they offer. These are really great ways for your student to get a high level overview of an organization perhaps they've learned about before. Um, and want to know more or some an organization that they've never heard of and are just curious. Typically at the end of those information sessions, there's a really good opportunity and time for questions and some one on one interaction as well. So it's a great time to start developing those industry connections. Encourage your students to bring a copy of their resume to those as well. We have offered alumni panels. So thinking about um, All of the different career paths that are within your student's particular field. Having examples of those folks working in industry today, encouraging students to ask questions. Um, it's really dialogue based in those panels. It's a, it's a unique opportunity to further understand career paths and also to develop some networking, right, and, and um, some contacts in the field. There are also workshops that we offer on a variety of different topics, uh, but preparing and applying for graduate school is one of them. So I know that we have talked a lot in this presentation about jobs, right, and experiences based around work, um, but we also help students with that application and preparation process for graduate school. And know that all of these experiences and opportunities that are helping to prepare students for their world of work are also opportunities 
that are preparing students for their graduate school programs and applications, as well as their life after graduate school. I do want to mention that we have other colleagues on campus in the Pre-Professional Advising Center who help students specifically in pre-professional programs like med school, or if they're intending to go to med school, law school, physical therapy, dental school, et cetera. They are our on-campus experts when it comes to those processes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about job search. Uh, we are happy to meet with your student to discuss their full-time job search as well as part-time job search. Uh, we can show them the basics of Handshake as well as LinkedIn, which are the two go-to professional platforms that we train students on. I'll talk a little bit more about interview stream here in a moment. Um, we can answer questions about cover letters, um, resumes, which probably would have come up um, hopefully earlier on in their tenure at UC, but we can dust those off and make sure they're exactly what they want. When it comes time to talk about fielding offers from opportunities and potentially negotiating a salary, we can really work through students live time, right? They can speak with us as those processes are taking place and get some information uh, about how to handle them or prepare beforehand. We also connect students with lots of additional resources. And one of those is Interview Stream, like I mentioned earlier. Interview Stream is an amazing tool. It's online 24 seven support with interview prep. So they can go online and basically conduct a mock interview that is tailored to their specific field. They can indicate what types of questions they want to be asked and it records them. So they can view back their interview and do some self critique, right? Um, and it also gives the opportunity for students to send that recorded interview session to career coaches or potentially share them with you as their parents and family or friends, other mentors to get that additional feedback and really help them to feel confident going into those interview settings. All right, Handshake, we've been talking about this throughout. Handshake is UC's career platform. All UC students have a Handshake account, and that is where they are going to find a plethora of these events, job opportunities, uh, workshops, you name it. Um, over 15,000 employers are connected right now with UC on Handshake, so it is very robust. Over 10,000 active co-op internship, full-time, and part-time job opportunities are there for students to browse and search through. And this is also the way for your students to schedule an appointment with their career coach. The link for that is uc.joinhandshake.com. And also through our website, we have a lot of good tutorials about how to navigate Handshake and how to get started. And our locations. So we are located as the Bearcat Promise Career Studio in 310 Tangerine University Center or TUC. It is a very central location on campus. Your students will know where we are most likely. Um, Right now we are offering those in-person walk-in hours with peer career coaches as well as career coaching appointments. And once COVID normalizes a little bit, we are going to obviously go back to campus and continue to expand our in-person offerings. But that is where we're located. We're lucky to have this gorgeous new space actually just moved into not long ago. And then other Colleagues within our division are located in Steger Student Life Center on the seventh and eighth floor. So you can see an image of that building on the right hand side. That might be where students find their mandatory co-op advisors, on-campus co-op advisors, service learning, undergraduate res research connections, as well as the administration of our division. Just one thing to mention about our colleagues in experiential learning um, that currently work or that would normally work in Steger, they are all presently working remotely. Um, so um, again, just so, you know, in terms of when we go back to campus, this is where we're located, but just wanted to make sure you're aware that they are all working remotely. And as Taylor mentioned, again, the career studio is both in person and virtual during this time. Okay, so just to recap, we wanted to remind you, we're here for you. We hope that you've been able to see that there are a lot of resources and opportunities that are available um, to help prepare your student 
for life after graduation, whatever that looks like for them. Um, we encourage you when you're having conversations with your student to um, show support for them, encourage them to start thinking about career early. We know students think that, you know, four years of college takes forever. Um, we probably both know that four years goes by incredibly fast. So the earlier that they're able to begin thinking about career, the more opportunity they will have to be able to engage. Um, we also encourage you um, to have conversations with your student about creating balance. As um, Taylor mentioned, you know, the importance of extracurriculars or part-time work as well as academics is really important. And employers also look at this when they're evaluating candidates. Um, and then also, you know, encouraging the opportunity to gain experience, whether that's an internship, a co-op, or one of the other um, experiential learning opportunities that we've mentioned throughout the presentation. And then finally, just wanted to remind you that um, you know, if your student is feeling unsure of where to get started or overwhelmed, um, we really encourage you to have your student connect with the career coaches. Um, we're able to connect students to all of the resources that we mentioned, um, as well as guide them through the process uh, you know, wherever they're at. So um, again, that's just another opportunity for them to engage with our office. So that is what we have to share with you today. We'd be happy to answer any questions that have come in through the chat or if folks have questions now that they're thinking. Thank you, Ellie and Taylor. That was extremely informative. I learned quite a bit of new things that I didn't already know about your work. So I really appreciate you sharing that with all of us today. Um, I wanted to just quickly answer a couple of things that were in the chat. Um, one is that I'm happy to share these slides with anyone who wants to send an email to us at families at uc.edu. Um, we can't post them on our website for accessibility reasons, um, but we can share them with you directly. So just shoot me an email at families at uc.edu and I'll be happy to share those. We also are recording the session and it will be shared once it can be captioned. Um, on our website at that point, but that's going to be a little while because it takes a minute to get it captioned. So the quickest thing would be just to send me an email. Um, so um, just to kind of turn it over, I'll ask a couple of things that people asked in the chat and feel free to send it um, in the chat directly to me or to everyone. Um, one question that came in and I have a follow up question to this. Um, is for co-ops, med students, should they reach out to their advisor mentor first or reach out to their career coach first? And as a follow-up to that, and maybe these are kind of separate but related, um, how can you describe sort of the way that the advisor serves as a support for students in exploring majors and finding their career path along with your office and kind of how do those complement each other, who to go to when? that kind of thing. Okay, so just to make sure I heard that correctly, that was a College of Medicine undergraduate student interested in co-op. Okay. The, the first question, yes, has to do with co-ops, where they would go, and then my follow-up is the sort of advisor's role versus your office. Okay, thank you. So students who are undergraduate students participating in our College of Medicine program do not participate in the full-time mandatory co-op program. They would participate in the pre-health internship program. Um, and so that program is structured um, within their curriculum. So there are specific professional development courses that they would take with our colleague, um, Dr. Robin Seltzer, um, that guides them along the way. Um, and then those students would also work collaboratively with their academic advisor to make sure that they're on track in terms of selecting classes as well as mentioning, as Taylor mentioned, with our colleague, colleagues in um, Pre-Professional Advising Center, or PPAC, um, who are going to be um, ensuring that they're making the necessary steps and, and they're keeping their academics to a point where they will be competitive to apply for medical school. Um, so that is typically kind of what we're seeing for undergraduate college of medicine students. Um, in terms of relationship and kind of how, you know, career coaches and folks in our office work with academic advisors, it's a fantastic question. Um, typically, uh, our academic advisors are more geared toward helping students select classes based off of the major that they've selected. 
to ensure that they're making appropriate um, progress within the curriculum. Um, so there are some conversations that come up about career, uh, but I would say that our office is um, much more um, geared toward helping folks who are either unsure of what they'd like to do or are considering changing their major and, and thinking about what opportunities exist. So um, we do try to work collaboratively to ensure that there's a warm handoff. Um, you know, if a student is transitioning from a conversation with their academic advisor over to a career coach, um, but I would say that that's really kind of the distinction um, and, and best way to describe the differences and how we're able to serve students. Thanks, Ellie. I think, you know, from a staff perspective, there are just so many people at UC who are collectively working to help make sure that your student is finding the resources they need and taking the steps towards meeting their career goals. Um, it's, I've worked at a lot of institutions and this is definitely the most collaborative um, resource filled place. Um, so I think it's really exciting that, you know, as a student, you have so many uh, resources at your disposal. Certainly a lot more than when I myself was a college student. Um, okay, the next question I have is you said you should, the students should start early. When is that, that they should get started? And I think you had mentioned previously that the first step, if they're not sure, would be to reach out to a career coach, but when should they do that? I can fill that question. Uh, so, it's never too early is really the answer there. Um, and sometimes I think it's just a matter of the student saying, you know, I, I feel like I wanna start engaging in this and I might have questions, but I don't even know what my questions are at this juncture because I am early on in my academic career, but that's a perfect time to schedule an appointment with us and we can help facilitate some of those discussions around career and start asking some of those questions of your students so they can internalize and kind of make sense of, um, what's going on and what their questions are and also connect them at that point with with resources and experiences and opportunities that might be appropriate for that given situation and in their time at UC. Um, so it's never too early. Send them RA. I would add to that though um, that I would en encourage you to offer flexibility for your student, particularly the first semester that they're starting college. It can just be really stressful in terms of you know, how am I a college student? How do I manage my own schedule? Um, perhaps with having a lot more freedom um, in terms of their structure than they previously had in high school. Um, and also just allowing them to acclimate to the environment of if, you know, if they're on campus, how do they find their classes? Um, you know, they're, they're concerned about making friends and things. So I would encourage you, you know, the first semester, I would say is really a great time for acclimation to campus. And then, you know, as they're beginning to um, think about clubs and organizations that they'd like to be part of, we'd be happy to be part of that conversation and connect them with resources that we feel like will be a good fit for their interests and also um, might help them professionally as well. So again, we kind of talked a little bit about balance, but just making sure um, that folks are aware of kind of the challenges of a student, you know, just getting started off in college as well. But that, that would be, I would say, you know, some of those initial conversations that you might be having with a student or inviting them to reach out to us about. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to go um, into the chat. I think you all can probably see that question. So I just want to make sure you have all the details. But the question is, when um, there are so many students who are applying for a co-op opportunity, how do you choose and what are the selection criteria? Okay, so I can address this one. Um, when students are applying to co-op, that is a competitive process. So um, there's no one in our office that is selecting which students get to participate and which students do not. So both if it's a co-op with an employer, um, the employer is the one choosing, or if it's a research opportunity, it is um, you know, the, the, the person in charge of research, so that PI, who is the one who is selecting students. So we do the best that we can to prepare students. So our students take um, an intro to co-op class to teach them about professionalism, um, preparing their professional documents. Um, so we do what we, the best we can to prepare students, to coach students throughout the process, but I think it's important to understand that these are um, competitive opportunities that students 
are competing against one another for, um, and that no one inside of you who um, is awarded these opportunities and who is not. Hopefully that helps. All right, and the next one for a med sci student for the SURF internship, are they allowed to live on campus? And I can answer that if you aren't sure about it. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, for students um, who are living on campus and then they go into a co-op for one of the semesters of the year, they can still remain on campus if that's when, if that's convenient for them to do that. All right, another one. Does UC focus only on opportunities in the Cincinnati area? This family is located in central Ohio and not sure how the student should proceed to find opportunities. I can answer that question and perhaps Ellie, you might um, have some additional information as well, but the answer is that we focus on opportunities in the Cincinnati area nationally and internationally. Um, through Handshake, that career platform that we use, your students are able to search for opportunities based on location. So I personally work with a lot of students who are thinking about experiences that might happen over the summer or another semester when they are living back home, right, wherever that might be. And we can help them through that process of search there. Um, and I know that jobs, both full-time and part-time, and internship is one piece of it. So perhaps, Ellie, do you know if some of the other types of experiences are Cincinnati-centric or, or outside of Cincinnati? Yeah, um, I would say we get a lot of opportunities because the university is located in Cincinnati, but we also do an incredible amount of outreach to ensure that there are opportunities across the, the country. Um, a lot of this comes from alumni who've graduated who reach back out and had a positive experience and want to extend those opportunities to current students. Um, and also we, you know, I, we have a partnership development team, which is our employer relations teams um, that actively goes and recruits students or employers from different areas. So um, I actually think we're going to be hiring like a regional recruiter um, and starting to have more of that model so we can have more localized information. So um, there are a wide variety of opportunities across the country um, that, that students can participate in. And actually many of our mandatory co-op students do leave the area um, and participate in those opportunities, you know, in Wisconsin or in California and spend a semester there. So not uncommon to happen at all. All right, and the next one, can anyone utilize the Bearcats Career Studio, or is it just students? What about recent graduates? I can take that question. So we are excited to offer these services to current students as well as alumni at this point and definitely. So current students scheduling through Handshake, alumni actually can schedule through Handshake as well and request a Handshake account. There is some information on our website about how to get that done. If you all need some assistance with that, certainly reach out to either Ellie or I directly and we can help you too. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to be able to continue to support your students even after graduation. Thanks, Taylor. All right, and one more question and then we're gonna um, wrap it up. Um, if you had to give one top piece of advice to students starting on their career journey, what would that be? That's such a good question. Hmm. For me, I would say um, to try to gain experience, to try to participate in internships and co-ops. Um, I think that that really allows a student to experience what the world of work is like, um, to understand more about the type of environment that they might thrive in or the type of environment that they're not going to enjoy. Um, and it also helps kind of guide their, their major and career decisions moving forward. So I think um, gaining experience and participating in internships and co-ops and those other experiential learning opportunities is, is really critical. 
I would agree with Ellie as well. Um, and the one thing that comes to mind for me might be a little bit more esoteric or at a, a mentality level, but um, helping your student to understand that they can be an active participant in this process and really design what their future can can be right or what they want that to look like and that is a very exciting but it's also very daunting <laughs> so um we we know that we appreciate the fact that that can seem very stressful but again taking that active versus passive role and really designing and thinking about um, what they want their life to look like and and how to break it down into smaller chunks to help them get there thank you both for sharing that um, and I want to thank you both for giving us this time today and this wonderful presentation with all kinds of wonderful content to help us support our students. Uh, families, I am going to drop one more link into our chat. This is for our family guide series, which you might be familiar with. It's on all kinds of different topics, but there is one um, around helping your student through the career exploration process at the beginning. Um, you know, questions you can ask just to get them thinking about what might be the right major for them um, and things like that. Um, so that's a great resource and it will help you find your way to all of the resources that Ellie and Taylor mentioned today. As a reminder, if you want us to share the slides with you, please email us at families at uc.edu and you can of course do that for anything else that you might need in supporting your Bearcat. And I want to thank you for joining us today to learn a little bit about um, career education at UC. Um, you are such essential partners in your student success and just being here, um, we appreciate that you committed this time today to supporting your students. So thanks so much for joining us and I hope everyone has a great rest of the day.